Hey, everybody. Uh, good to be with you today. My name is Brent Moores. I'm sitting in for Mr. Michael Fairborn today. He'll be back next week. But uh, today we're going to be looking at market and sector analysis. In particular, what's strong in the market, what's hot in the market, so to speak, what's not. And then let's do some uh, sample trades here, some examples, just to try and show you the transition of looking at market strength to actually physically placing sample trades here in the market. Now, I'm joined by Mr. Ben Watson helping me out in the chat. Always appreciate Ben. Ben is extremely knowledgeable, and uh, he has a bunch of his own webcasts uh, that I would encourage you to check out. I appreciate him in the chat. Uh, you can follow Ben on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Ben Watson CS. You can follow me on X, at Brent Moore CS. And I appreciate each of you for joining us, whether you're watching live or in a recording. Remember, though, that the information today is provided for general informational purposes only. It should not be considered an individual recommendation uh, or personalized investment advice. Schwab does not recommend the use of technical analysis as a sole means of investment research. And the paper money app application, which we'll be doing, we'll be using the Thinkorswim software application, desktop software. It's provided for educational purposes only. All investing involves risk, including loss of principal. And uh, there you go. I think, let's see, let me just see what else we got here. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. Well, let's add, you know, in the, in the chat, um, I, I know that there's a lot of talk about the Fed, uh, the Fed at two o'clock Eastern time, we have a Fed rate decision coming out. Uh, so we still got a few hours on that before we get that. And that certainly can affect the market. This is the S&P 500 right now. And in fact, you can see we're kind of right at this precipice here, right at a potential resistance. Is that going to be the focus that actually pushes us through uh, our resistance, or are we going to go down from there? I don't know. I don't even know what the Fed, you know, we don't know what the Fed decision is going to be. It seems like most most months when we come up with the Fed, uh, the Fed decision, we know more or less, I know it may be a strong word, but we have a pretty strong indication of exactly what it's going to be. And we wait more for the uh, comments from Chairman Powell that comes out about a half hour after that decision that really moves the market. And certainly his comments can move the market today. But today, there actually is a fair amount of uncertainty. One thing I wanted to point out, though, in terms of the, uh, the Fed, and uh, I'm going to bring this up at the risk that you guys have seen this. This is the current rate probabilities as implied from, or I guess I should say as inferred from, the Fed fund futures. This is from the uh, CME Fed Watch tool. Right now, it's saying about a 61% chance of a 50 basis point cut and about a 39% chance of a 25 basis point cut. That is not, uh, of course, no guarantees on that. We don't know what it's going to be ultimately. And, uh, you know, I, I'm sure uh, we'll, we'll see in a few hours. But something I wanted to point out is this, is regardless of what we do today, September 18th, is let's go to January here for a sec on this same thing. And let's look at what the target rate possibilities are for January here. Remember, the current rate is 525 to 550. The highest percentage, as inferred from the uh, Fed fund futures, is, uh, let's see, let's do the math here. What is that? One, uh, 150 basis point cuts between now and January. So even if we get a 25 point cut today, the expectations are between now and January 29th is the meeting. Uh, there's gonna, there's very likely going to be significant cuts November and December, not just a 25 basis point cut. 
Okay, so that's the trajectory, and that trajectory is effect, affects the market. We're seeing that in some sectors, and we'll look at those sectors in just a little bit here. But that is affecting all of the market right now. So we'll see what the market does. Obviously, there'll be you know there'll be some market reaction, and uh, maybe until then, not a lot. I mean, S and P 500 right now. 0.01%, you know, not much of a move right now on the S&P 500. On the NASDAQ, we've got 0.1%, not much change. On the Russell, which has been quite volatile lately, even on that, it seems to be we're in wait and see mode. Now, what I want to take is kind of a, a top-down approach today to the markets and see what the markets have been doing. We don't know what they're going to do going forward, but one common approach, and this is what we typically do in classes like this, is we look at where strength has been in the market. So we'll go through those sectors um, and uh, we'll go through sectors and see where the strength has been. And I think one of the clearest way to see ways to see where strength has been is to look at relative strength. This is an indicator that you can add to your graphs, everybody, if you like. It's a study. You just simply go to your little flask, type in relative strength. Do not uh, confuse relative strength with RSI. Even though technically rel RSI stands for relative strength indicator, this is a separate, totally separate thing. This is comparing how strong something is as compared to some underlying. Our underlying, the default is the S&P 500, SPX here. So you can see that. Here's the Russell 2000, small caps. You can see we've seen a little more strength lately. How do we know? Because this line is going up, okay? If we compare where we were back in, was that late July to now, we can say, all in all, the relative strength has declined on the Russell 2000, on small caps. And so we've seen a general weakening of small caps as compared to the S&P 500. So by looking at where it was to where it is now, we can see how strong it's been. In fact, people will often ask, they'll look at this and they'll go, what's that red line that go, that horizontal red line that goes across? That's just the starting point. I'm on a six month chart right now. It just makes it easy saying six months ago, from six months ago today, where are we on that? Um, where are we on that relative strength there right now? Well, we're basically where we started. We're right at that red line. But that's not going to be the case for all these different sectors that we look at. And so that's an easy way to. So let me just kind of mention a few things. Recap. One, the, the slope of the line tells us what we're doing at that point of time as compared to our underline. In this case, we're using SPX, but as Ben mentioned in the, or actually James mentioned in this chat, it, it can be whatever else you want to put, uh, put it to. Uh, so the slope of the line is going to be important. We're also going to look at where it was at the beginning to now. Now I'm on that six month chart. But uh, let's let's look at that in comparison to some sectors. So I'm going to go to S&P 500 sector indices. This is a public watch list. If you'd like, you can just bring up a watch list on the left, go to public, and go to S&P 500 sector indices right there. That'll bring this up. This gives us your 11 sectors okay it's going to it gives you 11 sectors one thing you were going to add if you're just looking at the symbols you're not going to know which is which right so add a description column in there that's what i have there so we can see our sectors now as i look at these i can go and i can look and see how have they done how have they compared to the s p 500 right now uh, and well, let's look. This is energy that we're on. What has energy been doing? Well, energy has been going down, right? I mean, probably not a surprise. There's not a direct correlation necessarily, but if you look at the price of crude oil, look at what we got here. Uh, 
it's just been from from the start. Remember, the start on this relative strength is this is the start of our six month graph here is is right there. This is just a crude oil future. We're not going to actually trade this, but I just want to show you the price of oil. Uh, what's we done? Well, we're compared to where we started, we're lower, and it's basically been a trend down the whole time. So we know that has there's been weakness there, and of course, if we're looking at energy, probably not a surprise that looks pretty similar to the whole graph on on energy. Okay, uh, so. If we're looking for strength in the market, and it does, I mean, this could represent the very low, but the kind of a traditional technical notion is you traders often go to invest in areas of strength. Now, of course, there's ways to invest in these that aren't go, talking about individual stocks. We're going to talk about individual stocks. We're going to talk about narrowing it down in terms of, say, a top down analysis. For those of you not familiar with the top-down analysis term, what we mean by that is we're looking at the broader areas of the market, finding the stronger, broader areas of the market. Today, I'm focusing on these sectors right here. And then finding the stronger sectors and finding individual stocks in those. And I'm going to show you, you know, how you can find individual stocks in those. So let's, uh, but clearly, Energy is not the area that we're going to go fishing in today, so, so to speak, because of the decline on there. Let's go information technology. You can see kind of big V pattern. But if I go and I look at the trend on IT, that's been the current trend on information technology there. Okay. Uh, what IT technology was actually doing really good for a while. You see that right down there on relative strength? Of late, not so much. In fact, you can see this section of the graph right here pretty much matches this section of the graph right there. So there's your relative strength on uh, information technology. I'm going to go with that general trend, not just a little blip up here on that. Okay, let's keep on moving up. Now, I'm actually kind of cheating here because I'm going in inverse order of a of a um of a one month return okay uh, th this is actually a custom script i have although you can just do a one month return on a normal script in fact let me just take a quick tangent here and discuss that before we get back to our relative strength analysis so this this custom script you can get right off my X page. It's a pin tweet. This is just one month, okay? Um, however, if you, uh, if you want just a regular one month return, you can do that. Go to the gear, click on customize. And if you go down to the P's, there is a percent return, okay? Uh, and you can once you add that, you can adjust the time frame on there. You got to scroll over a little bit though. Click there, and then you can see um, uh, right there. Length length is fourteen. Okay, but I actually kind of like this script, and you don't have to use it. And remember, scripts aren't guaranteed for accuracy, folks. They're not guaranteed for accuracy. This technically, in fact. Truth be told, this technically isn't one month, it's 21 trading days. Well, on average, there's 21 trading days in a month, hence we have a one month return here on this. But what this script does, it gives you a relative strength of it compared to the S&P 500. All right, this is, uh, so even though right now all the positive numbers are in green, the negative numbers are in red. It isn't always that case. You can have a negative number in green as long as it's underperforming the S&P 500 there, okay? So let's, um, let's, let's, this, uh, let's keep on moving up. Uh, communication services, we've had more of a decline, okay? The, trending down, again, we see a match here and here. Healthcare, 
uh, actually not not too bad. Lately, it's been going up. But if we were to actually draw a trend line here, we've actually kind of broken through that trend line. And yes, you can do your technical analysis on this. All right. Um, and let me click here and go back. Uh, let's keep on moving up. Materials, uh, we'll call that so-so. Uh, you may look at this and go, well, that looks pretty good. But compared to other sectors, I think what we're going to find is this is just not great. It's been mostly going sideways. It's been mostly going in line lately. From here to here, it's been mostly going in line with what the S&P 500 has been doing. Financials, trending up generally, okay? Overall, so maybe a little bit more strength. How much does this have to do with an interest rate environment of an easing of, of a monetary policy? Well, financials typically stand to benefit there on that, but there's some others that actually even more so. Staples, nice area of strength here. And we don't have to go with the top one necessarily, but staples, we see some nice strength. A little bit of a pullback here. I'm not sure that's a huge concern there. Okay. Okay. Now, Matt in the chat says, if you're an investor seeking value, could use a relative strength study to buy into weakness and sell into strength. Not So let's let's kind of distinguish between growth versus value versus a little bit more of a, uh, well, the answer is sometimes value stocks out to perform, outperform and they actually will show more relative strength. Now, technically, if a stock or a sector has been going down, okay, um, if a stock or sector has been going down, that means it's gotten cheaper compared to what where it was, you know, a X period ago, a month ago, or something like that. So yeah, you could do that. Some contrarian investors, a contrarian investor may look for weakness in the relative strength. Okay, may look for weakness in the relative strength to actually use as their uh, their fishing grounds, so to speak, in terms of trying to find areas strength. Uh, but uh, it, broadly speaking, yeah, you could potentially find some more value type stocks there. Let's check out industrials. Industrials, we've seen a lot of strength. So over the past six months, industrials has underperformed a little bit, because remember, this is the starting point. But I'm focused more, not on the last six months, I'm focused more on the last month or so. And we've seen a strength up. And that, by the way, is why when I'm using this script, on my X page, I have a three-month script, a six-month script on there. This is the one in terms of more recent strength. That's what I'm looking at there. Okay? So, um, why? Well, because it's a balancing act. If you go out too far, the market may change by the time, you know, what's been strong for the last six months, maybe the last couple months, Maybe all the strength occurred four, five, six months ago. And but on the other extreme, I you want to kind of narrow out the noise. Even some of those that are performing performing worse, like energy, has some little up up moves, right? This could just simply be a bear flag at this point. We don't know here, but it we could simply, this could just simply be a general trend and a bear flag. And so that's why I'm not using say like a five day return. Last five days look pretty decently, uh, pretty decent. But uh, that's why I'm using one month return as kind of a, a medium. Here's a dis discretionary, a lot of strength in discretionary here. We're not trying to find necessarily the absolute best one. We're trying to find ones that look pretty good. Here's utilities, okay? And here is real estate. By the way, so I mean, these have really been the strongest sectors. You can see that in my one month performance. And you can also see the general correlation between using the relative strength down here and just looking at a one month return. 
I very often I'm not using the relative strength graph graph, but I use this all the time in terms of trying to find those areas that have been stronger lately. Okay. This is not limited, by the way, to just sectors. You can put this on anything else you want, any other watch list. You can put this on your personal watch list you want there and just see what has been stronger of late and was what has not been strong of late. Now, so once we find the sectors that we want, and by the way, real estate and utilities tend to be probably not a shocker that these have been going up. These are interest rate sensitive sectors. You know, if you think about utilities, utilities tend to carry very, well, let me give you kind of two reasons maybe that they're, they're interest rate sensitive and they would tend to benefit from lowering interest rates. One, utilities tend to carry a lot of debt, okay? They, that's true with small caps too, by the way, but uh, utilities tend to call, c carry a lot of debt. If interest rates are dropping across the board, their cost of financing that debt goes down. That tends to help utilities, okay? Here's another thing. Think about why you invest in utilities. Well, one reason is, um, one reason is that, uh, they 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 do it for diversification purposes okay that's certainly a reason but another reason is utilities often have a high relatively high dividend yield okay they typically pay a fairly high dividend as compared to most other sectors well if your dividend yield is say two percent and interest rate prevailing interest rates are high how attractive is it to go to utilities because of that yield well, it's less attractive. But if interest rates go down and are lower, then finding those higher yielding stocks are uh, tend to be more attractive there. So when we start looking at, you know, this sector rotation, we see money, you know, what's the market doing? Where Where's the money going? Well, you can see that. Look at real estate. Look at utilities. And, you know, those are the, those are the two most prominent there. Okay, so now, where do we go if we want to find these areas and find actual stocks in these areas where do we go from here so let's let's just take an example here let's take utilities here for as an example okay you can do real estate just as well or or discretionary just as well but one approach that often i'll do is i'll say look we found the top sector i want to find the top stocks in that sector so you can go down here you can go to buy industry and click on utilities, but there is a problem if I click on select all utilities. And that is, you're going to get a lot of really small stocks here in this. So one way to do it is you can compare, you can add in like a market cap column in there, which will help you. And so to easily do that, you just click on your little gear, click on customize, add market cap, market cap. Okay. And let me just add that in. Click on OK. Let me just shrink this down a little bit. And then I can sort by market cap. We need to scroll a little bit. We've got a bunch of NAs. And now I'm seeing some of those bigger market cap companies here. Get a little bit bigger. So here's the next Terra, Southern, that's an ADR, Duke, and so on there. These are the bigger companies so that I am, uh, so that I am not uh, get, getting just penny stocks there on that, right? And you can see the strength of those and you can go, oh, you know, looks, looking stronger, looking stronger. And so actually some of these foreign ones have been stronger of late, but some of these are not too bad, up six and a half percent over the past month, okay? So, so there you go. And liquidity can be important, especially if you're an options trader, but even stock traders, common stock tra traders, often don't want to see really low liquid ones. So that's one way to do it. Now, Heather in the chat said a great, had a great question. She said, do you ever look at an intermediate one? Yeah, absolutely. You can look at an intermediate point. And that is, so in other words, instead of just looking at utilities and going to select all utilities, I can then look at 
electric utilities, gas utilities, et cetera. Another way to do that is on this initial watch list is instead of going to public sector indices, which gives you those 11 sectors, this goes sectors and industries. And now you have, let me just kind of sort this here. Now, when you have this, you're going to see everything that has the uh, starts with uh, 55 are utilities sector, utilities kind of subsectors or industries here. And you can see, oh, you know, water utilities, there's uh, that's the sector as a whole. This is the uh, Hold on one sec. Let me just make this big. Okay. There's a sector, utilities, Inscript, electric utilities, and you can go on down the line and see what has been stronger, but it looks like like those, um, sorry, let me go back up to the top, but it looks like some of those, where was I? Some of these are, uh, are you, can, you can just sort, put it this way, you can sort by which the stronger ones and not go straight from sector, you can go to the actually industry group or subsectors in there, okay? So you can do it that way, it's just an easy way to sort. Now, here's the thing, this is pretty easy uh, to do, but one thing I would suggest is this, is you can do something kind of similar to what I've done and, and just do this and go S&P 500 utilities. I have created a scan with all the different sectors. So I, if, if I look here, I have my personal list. I've created a scan. I'll take a few minutes for you to do it. S&P 500 communication services, S&P 500 consumer discretionary, S&P 500 staples, and so on. Okay, so there we go, and you can do it. You can do it this way, and um, now I have these are utility stocks all on the S&P 500. How do I do that? You just go to a scan, and you're, what you're going to do is, let me just uh, to, 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 to reset this to set these up. I'm going to reset this. And you can create a scan filter and just say, hey, look, I just want S&P 500 companies. S&P 500 companies. And you can pick your industry or sector. Here I did utilities. Select all utilities run the scan, I've got 31 stocks here, and then I can save it. Just go up here, save the scan query. It's gonna bring up a message. Just type S&P 500 utilities. Okay, I'm not gonna do it because I already have that. Then what you do, change it. We'll do healthcare. Same process, save the scan, and there, and then you have, when you want to see what the strongest, more liquid type stocks in a particular sector, you just do that. Couple that with your, your return column and you got it. You got your, um, you got your top-down analysis. We started with finding the stronger sector and now we can just find the strongest sec strongest liquid stocks in that sector. You can do this in the market watch just as well if you like. But one nice thing is over here is now I can just sort from stock to stock and look here on this and try and find those stocks that are of interest to me here on this. Okay. And I can look at this and I can say, oh, XEL has been pretty strong lately. You can see over the last couple of months, we have relative strength. And then what we can do is we can say, well, maybe I'll look to do a trade on this based on relative strength here. Now, in addition, 
what I can do is I can say, well, look, I'm, I'm interested. My ATR is right about a dollar. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to pull up some moving averages on this. And I'm going to say, hey, look, I've got a 20-day moving average. I've got 50 and 20. I've got a 20-day moving average. I'm going to put my stop just about one ATR below that moving average. Moving average is at 62.50. I'm going to put a stop, and remember, stops aren't guaranteed, but I'm going to put a stop at 61.50, right about here. That gives that room roughly right about there is the stop. We're going to put a stop. That gives this room to pull back and give us a bounce, maybe, but if it goes down too far, it's going to get us out. Okay? So, Remember, when you're doing stops when, or when you're considering exits, you got to give it some wiggle room in terms of a trend, in, in, unless you're doing a little swing trade or something like that, and you're just doing a pure momentum trade. But this is more of a trend trade based on the relative strength. All right, any questions on that? I'll check questions in just one sec, but I'm going to do a trend trade here, and I'm going to right-click on this. I'm going to by custom with the stop. And my stop, I said, I'm just going to do this as a market order. The market is open. I'm going to put my stop loss at 61.50. 61.50. My stop is going to be good till canceled. Let me just shrink down this column. Good till canceled. And there we go. Now that's 100 shares. Make sure that's a, an appropriate quantity for you. But the stock right now is at about 64.50. And uh, stop, good till canceled. I'm going to actually confirm and send. Make sure you read this with market orders. Look, I don't know exactly what price I'm going to get in, but it should get me in quickly. Market is open. And with stops, there's no guarantee on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send that order. And that's an example of a top-down analysis trade using kind of these this relative strength process here. Let's do another one. And uh, so I'm going to go back to my watch list. And let, in fact, let me let me do this. Let me mention this. If you are interested, you don't have to do a, you know, you don't have to go with these sectors. Maybe you're seeing strength elsewhere. For example, I already mentioned oil. Well, oil has been declining in terms of our relative strength. Oops, let me get my relative strength on there. Um, oil's been declining in terms of my relative strength. But what about you're looking at something like gold? So this is a gold future. We're not going to trade the future, but we're using it to see the price of the commodity. Gold has been pretty strong. Gold has been taking advantage of that's you know, we ask, where's the money been going in the market? Well, this is one other place, precious metals. Kind of flight to safety sometimes is what people consider gold. And you see the strength there. I don't have a pre-built uh, S&P 500 gold stocks watch list that I did. Remember, these were scans that I built, and once you save the scan, it automatically saves it as a watch list. So I don't have to keep rebuilding this, okay? And so, um, so there, there we go. And so, but if I don't have the watch list on there, I'm going to go down to my industry. I can go to materials and. Um, I can go to uh, gold here. Now, again, I'm going to get a lot of little stocks, but that's where that market cap column comes in. And I can find some of the bigger ones. Here's Newmont. Does that seem reasonable? This is top down. We saw that the 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 sec well not a sector, but we saw that the broader group here, gold miner industry group, 
has been strong, excuse me, not, it wasn't gold miner, it's gold price of gold has been strong. Now we're in gold itself, looking at individual stocks, Newmont, which is a miner, nice strength here on that. In fact, if I zoom in, you can see that right there. And up, down, up, down, kind of these, it's, it tends to be do these flags up, down, and then here. I can, again, do a trade on that if I'm interested in. In fact, I can even do an option trade trade there. So, uh, and let's, uh, in fact, let's do that. Let's say, hey, look, gold is pretty strong. Newmont is pretty strong. Do I have liquid options? That's one reason why we care about market cap is I want to see liquidity on these. Let's go out about a month. Let me go to single options and look here and just kind of get an eye. Uh, yeah, I mean, lo looking at this put option, there's a four cent difference between my bid price and ask price. That's not bad. That's fairly tight. There's a five, four, three cent there on this. There's about a three cent there on this. So I got to find a level that makes sense. And I can go, oh, look, 5250. Now, these are monthly options. If I go to weekly options, let's go a little shorter term, only 23 days out, okay? Only 23 days out, we can check the liquidity. Sometimes they're less liquid when you go to those weekly options. But these seem, just looking at this bid ask spreads, these seem to be fairly, uh, fairly liquid. I'm gonna go to that 52 strike. 23 days, 52 strike. Let's just take a look here. So basically what we're saying over the next three weeks, and those are calendar days on that map, if we did a trade where our belief is, our, our forecast is gold stays above the 52 level, is that reasonable from a technical standpoint? We've had higher lows. Doesn't mean this can't reverse. We've had higher highs. It appears that we're kind of bouncing there. And look, I don't know where it's going to go, but by doing a spread, we can kind of limit our, you know, potentially limit our losses. And let's, so let's do a short put vertical spread here on this. Is that fair? Um, we did a stock trade a minute ago. Let's do an option trade here on this. I'm going to go to that 52 strike. I'm going to click on the bid price. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'll do a two, two wide and go down the 50. I'm going to hold down my control key and click on the ask price. The reason I'm holding down the control key is if I just click on the 50, it's going to replace the 52 short contract with the 50 long contract. I want them both there. So I'm going to hold down that control key. Okay. And that's 50, 57 cent credit. What's our return on risk on this? $57 theoretical max profit divided by 143 theoretical max loss. That's about a 40% return on risk. Now you may be going, that's not super high, but keep in mind, this is a higher probability trade. In this case, if, if gold goes up, the trade should work out fairly well. If gold stays the same, the trade should work out fairly well. If the stock, if gold goes down a little bit even, if enough time decay comes off it, the trade should work out very well. Now, there's no perfect trades, and if gold goes way down, then we're likely, most likely going to lose some money there on that. Okay, so um, now also uh, for in the chat, someone said gold likely going to 3000. Well, I don't know if gold is likely going to 3000. I don't know if it's going to go to 3000 or not, but you can determine the type of trade by your forecast. This is Newmont, but if you truly, here's gold. If you think gold's going up to 3000, you maybe you're not doing a short put vertical. Maybe you're doing on Newmont, you're doing something like a long call in that case, or just buying the stock. Oops, 
do the wrong symbol, NEM, okay? Newmont, maybe you're just buying the stock. But in this case, here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna confirm and send that. I'm not planning on putting a stop loss on this. You can if you like, but by doing the spread, we've, we're limiting our potential losses to $142 on that, okay? Fair enough. Uh, again, it's a, it's a higher probability trade, but certainly no guarantees on that, okay? Let me, let me uh, I'm gonna send that trade, and it's, it's thinking there, so we'll see on that. Now, I'm gonna, I wanna check, before I wrap up here, I do wanna check and see any questions here. I appreciate Ben in the chat. Um, see if there's anything. Um, experts can agree. I agree. Experts can agree. And that's why something I would suggest is this. Use, you know, you got to come up with, you listen to people that you trust, but you listen with a healthy bit of skepticism. Because even no matter who you're listening to, they're wrong sometimes. And you also need to protect yourself on your trade. Maybe you're convinced that Newmont is gonna be going up. I could be wrong. That's why we use spreads. That's why you use stop losses, even though stop losses aren't guaranteed. And uh, so I wanted to give you an example of a stock trade and option trade. If you don't trade options, no problem. Don't worry about it. The, these principles that I showed you today apply to stock. They can, you can use them for options as well. Newmont just filled there on that. Um, Remember, the general process though is look at the overall sector. The way I typically do it is I go to this public list. And then you can either use relative strength, which I showed you on the chart there. There's your relative strength. Or to be honest, it's real easy. Just use one month return. See what it's been doing over the last month. Your stronger sectors are gonna be the one there. Once you find the stronger sectors, it doesn't have to be the strongest one necessarily. Once you find the stronger sectors, you can look for those individual strong stocks um, on, on those, okay? Now, um, le let me just answer a question here before I do wrap up. Uh, how does the probability calculator um, how do you get the probability? Okay, so what's the probability? Well, one easy way to do it is on our Newmont trade is you, there's a column, you can use delta or you can use a probability in the money, okay? And we picked a 52 strike here on this. This is saying there's about a 40% percent chance of it being in the money. Now, technically, that's not a break-even point because the stock could actually go a little bit below 52. Um, what, let's see, our trade price was around 58 cents. So our, our stock is going to be about 51.50 is going to be our break-even point, which gives our probability of roughly 35 percent chance of it being in the money or being at a losing position, theoretical position at expiration. Remember, these probabilities are at expiration there, okay? At expiration. Final question, okay? Final question, relative strength. I, I can't speak for IBD. I don't know exactly how they calculate it. This is simply taking the price of whatever we're looking at and comparing it to the price of that. It's as simple as you can get in terms of a relative strength. That's all this does. That's how I like it. Uh, looking at relative strength that way or just looking at percentage returns compared to one another. I think that is as simple as it gets and it's straightforward and it tells you how things have been. Doesn't necessarily mean that's how things are going. All right, I wanna thank Ben in the chat for helping me out. I wanna thank you all for joining me and Coming up next, we have managing an options portfolio. And uh, please make sure you subscribe to the Trader Talks channel. And uh, 
there you go. We'll all see, uh, you know, see what the Fed does today. Kind of an interesting day. Maybe some uh, lower volatilities earlier in the day, at late afternoon, probably some higher volatilities, I would guess. So we'll see. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.